Welcome. The purpose of this tutorial is to provide you with an overview of basic model data and of the data inheritance defaulting mechanism used by Design Builder. During the tutorial I'll briefly review the main data entry tabs, show you how Design Builder hierarchical data inheritance works and finally show you how to clear data back to default settings. This tutorial only provides an overview and much more detail will be included on each tab throughout the model data series of tutorials. As a general rule I'll only go into sufficient detail in these tutorials to enable you to undertake routine modelling tasks. The more advanced features and options are covered in the program help and also in later tutorials which show the software in action. The model used is a simple two-storey office building with a fully glazed reception area, a central atrium and fixed shading at roof level above the south, east and west facades. The activity tab is where we input the data related to the zone usage. This determines the majority of the internal heat gains in the building. We specify the activity initially by selecting the most appropriate activity template. Here we see that the open plan office template has been loaded at building level. The info panel to the right provides information relevant to the current tab and operation. For example, Clicking on the template option will display more detailed template information. The activity template includes appropriate values for occupancy density and environmental criteria such as heating, cooling and ventilation set points and internal gains from equipment. Some of the options available in the activity tab, such as internal gains, will depend on the options selected in the main building model options. Some data also include relevant schedules that determine when the parameters are active during simulation. For example, the open office equipment schedule is set here under the office equipment header, and the open office occupancy schedule is set here under the occupancy header. All this data changes automatically when a new activity template is loaded. The activity template or any of its settings or schedules can be changed at building, block or zone level. The open office template is currently set at building level and will be used as the default template for all blocks and zones unless it is changed at those lower levels. After selecting the reception block I can change the activity in that part of the building to office reception either by double clicking on the relevant activity in the info panel or by highlighting it with one click and then clicking the tick icon to apply the data or selecting it using the browse button accessed by le left clicking the template name and then double clicking the item. Loading the new activity template automatically loads all the other associated data with that activity. See for example the reception occupancy schedule is now loaded here. The construction tab is where we specify the main non-glazed building fabric properties. These dictate the thermal performance of the opaque internal external surfaces of the building. A relevant template for the building type or the maturity of the design may be loaded and here we see that the UK Part L2 2006 medium weight template is loaded. This will bring with it appropriate fabric construction details for the walls, floor and roof etc. We can use different constructions in different parts of the building. 
and here I'll select the first floor blocks and load a rendered wall construction at block level by double clicking on the info panel or with a single click and applying with the tick. You can also draw specific constructions onto specific parts of the building using subsurfaces. Here for example I select the area below the ground floor windows on the north facade and draw on a subsurface wall construction. Note that the glazing is identified by yellow outline and the subsurfaces are blue. This area of wall will then assume the properties of the particular subsurface construction which has been set for that block, zone or surface. Where you have a larger building with a number of different types of wall or roof construction, the visualization tool is a great way of checking that you've loaded the correct construction for each part of the building. As you can see here, the rendered view of the model clearly shows the different wall constructions applied on the first and ground floors. As the design matures, you'll generally want to create your own constructions that match the detailed design of your building and I'll show you how to do that in a later tutorial. The openings tab is where we specify the data for glazing and vents and also the operating parameters for doors. Again the template determines the default settings in the openings tab. Different glazing types can be selected from the default or other templates and loaded into the model at building, block, zone or individual surface level. A number of options exist which allow us to define the glazing layout by selecting the parameters ranging from no glazing to 100% glazing. The default window to wall percentage in this case is 30%. This is easily changed to say 50% on the ground floor blocks by clicking the 50% position on the slider control. The percentage can also be changed by left clicking, holding and dragging the slider to the required percentage. Alternatively, we can use the openings tab to specify the glazing data and then draw in the windows, roof lights and doors using the drawing tools. This method will be demonstrated in a later tutorial. We can also specify both internal and external types of shading at any level via the window shading option for internal blinds etc and the local shading option for external shading. For example, here I will select the southern wall of the ground floor blocks. This is the 180 degree wall in the navigation panel. And add the overhang and side fins to all glazing on that wall. Note that we can also achieve, achieve the same external shading effects by drawing component blocks on the relevant parts of the building exterior. For glazing and shading we can use the layout tab to quickly check 
that we've correctly applied the changes to the different areas of the building. Note the increased percentage glazing on the ground floor and the fixed shading on the southern facade of the ground floor also. In the lighting tab, the selected lighting template dictates the default lighting parameters and changing the template changes those parameters. The energy consumption, schedule, task and display lighting and exterior lighting details can also be changed individually if required. The lighting control option enables you to model the reduced energy consumption and associated internal heat gains based on the use of daylight controls. These reduce the luminaire output when the illuminance on the working plane meets specified levels. The daylight simulation can be based on whether the luminaire output reduces in a linear or stepped fashion in relation to the amount of daylight received. We can specify up to two separately controlled areas in each zone if required, such as the front and back half of the room. The HVAC tab is where the mechanical building services systems and some of the natural ventilation parameters for the model are defined. This model uses the simplest level of HVAC and natural ventilation data. A more complex method of modelling HVAC systems can be set in building model options. Again, the selected template dictates the defaults loaded for each of the subsystems, such as its energy consumption. The mechanical ventilation, heating, cooling and domestic hot water subsystems can be enabled or disabled as required and the individual data elements such as the system fuel type and efficiency and operating schedule here in the heating sections can be amended to suit. The schedule for each of the subsystems is loaded by default from the activity template in the activity tab. The natural ventilation section provides the parameters on which a natural ventilation simulation can be performed. Design Builder offers two levels of model detail for natural ventilation which will be fully explained in later tutorials. The simpler scheduled natural ventilation option is used in the tutorials that follow. The data entry requirements for the more complex calculated natural ventilation simulations are shown in a specific tutorial. Design Builder uses a system called Data Inheritance to minimise the amount of model data entry required and to speed up data entry. The hierarchical data inheritance concept is illustrated in the graphic here. The most common data is entered at building level and this data is then inherited by all the blocks, zones, surfaces and openings in the levels below unless it is changed at any of these levels. If it is changed at say block level then all the zones, surfaces and openings in that block inherit the new data but it doesn't affect any of the other blocks in the building. Data which is hard set at a specific level is shown in red in the tab where it is set. For example at building level the glazing is hard set to 30%. Note the red text. If I now navigate to the first floor, it still shows 30%, but the text is blue, denoting that it has inherited that value from the building level above in the hierarchy. Earlier in the tutorial, I hard set the glazing to 50% on both ground floor blocks which we can see here is red, again denoting that it is hard set at that level. All surfaces 
in this block would inherit the 50% glazing setting unless changed at that lower level. Hardset data is not affected by changes made at the levels above. For example, a glazing type hard set at building level will not be inherited where the glazing type has previously been hard set at block, zone or surface level. There is a clear to default tool in the toolbar which enables us to quickly and easily clear any data set back to the level above where it was hard set. For example, after incorrectly loading a different glazing type into zone 1 of the ground floor east, I can restore the default setting by selecting the clear to default tool. This provides the option to clear data on all tabs or just the current tab and also allows us to select the level that we want to clear back to. As we are at zone level we can clear that zone and all the levels below that zone but it will not affect the block or other zones in the block were they to exist. I'll clear down to surface level. Note that the text has reverted to blue denoting inherited data. This tutorial has provided an overview so that you can better appreciate the relationships between the model data sets prior to viewing the detail in the basic model data series of tutorials that follow.